This is Betsy Neal from Entertainment World Magazine. Today I will be interviewing the creator of the movie Becoming Jody, Mr. Carrie Silberman. Carrie, why the title Becoming Jody? Well, in a way, all the characters are becoming Jody in different ways. I'm not going to reveal that right now. But Jody went through a very traumatic accident when her mother left her with some very negligent neighbors and she came back in in the form of a little plastic pirate mm. and so we have to return to the essence of what Jody used to be okay. redemption now the character Dicka seems like there was a special relationship between you two whereas the others were superficial were you exposing a little of your homoerotic nature uh, there's no real homoeroticism in the film there, there is a character, Daydak, who I did meet when I was in custody, which is another story. And he is presenting sort of his own perspective on drug rehab classes and people that are addicted to drugs. And he has a very sort of cynical notion, and that does come out in the film. So many of the characters are really based on real people that I've met in my life. And perhaps some of them have part of all of us in them, as we're all humans. Okay, the box and the mask. Neither one had any relevance to what it represented or who was behind the mask. Elaborate and take your time. It's so vital to the movie. Right. Uh, let me start off with the box first. I'm, I'm not going to give the answer. It, the, what's inside the box has different meaning to everybody, depending on what your perspective is in life. It's like when Charles Foster Kane in Citizen Kane talked about the rosebud, the sled. Uh, does that represent his lost childhood? Does that represent a girlfriend in his past? Or does it represent something else? As for the mask, I can easily explain that. We're all wearing masks at different times in our lives. You know, when I was a lawyer and I was in court, I was wearing a certain mask. When I'm asking for ice cream at Baskin Robbins, I'm wearing a different mask. And when I'm you know, disciplining my daughter, then I'm wearing yet another mask. So we're all wearing different masks in life. And everybody is behind a mask. And you're behind a mask right now. I'm, I'm behind a mask right now, pretending to you know, be interviewed by Betsy Neal. Okay, let's watch a clip. scenes, but this was the most unnerving. Was it a coping strategy by Flem, or were they social commentary? So that's a great question. Actually, all the puppet theater segments have particular relevance and give us an insight into the characters, whether they're desperate, whether they're emoting some other objective. There, there is you know, this one particular clip that we just watched does sort of decipher Flem's innermost angst, which is his own guilt over what happened to his daughter. Why wasn't he there? I mean, sure, he can blame Amy all day long for what happened to his daughter, but doesn't he have to take some responsibility as well as parents? You know, we can't just blame the other parent and say, oh, you left him with the Robinsons, and therefore I washed my hands of the whole thing. No, he needs to take responsibility as well. And through his monologue, he's emoting that angst. Okay. Well, we don't want to give away the plot, so I will wrap this up with a hearty thumbs up. Not since the film movie explored trans species relationship has anything gone so beyond the pale and touch. So many human issues in a cutting edge way. Any last words? Well, I just wanted to thank you so much, Miss Neal, for coming down you know, all the way from Los Angeles to interview us here in San Jose, California. We're very excited about Becoming Jody, the sequel which is also called the coveting for obvious reasons. And I, I'm glad that we had this time together. So thank you for asking questions. Thank you very much. And it was much. a pleasure seeing you again. You too. I remember you when we were working on that film. What was it, Gone with the Gombies, I think? Yeah, and I was gone after that. <laughs> yeah, who wasn't?
Okay, thank you.